What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to discuss this Harry Potter RPG, if it'll be shown or revealed at Sony's uh, PlayStation 5 reveal. Now, at least at the time of recording this, and probably even by the time you guys watch this, there is still no confirmed day for when the PS5 is going to get revealed, but I do feel like it'll still happen eventually, obviously, uh, before E3, probably sometime uh, in March. And we've been making these kind of videos for a lot of games over the last uh, weeks, uh, talking about you know which of these games could possibly appear. Now, this was kind of brought on to me from PlayStation Universe. Now, I like that website. I think they're a really good website. But they had reported that there was, like, new footage of Harry Potter's RPG. And I was like, oh, my dear God, I need to, like, look at it. Turns out it was literally just a rehash of the exact same footage that was in October of 2018. But the point is people are still talking about this game. This, thing, this game is still popular and still gaining popularity and there are still people out there that fully believe including myself that this game is real uh, we talked about in the last video why it's not looking good for 2020 for it and you know i think still in terms of releasing i feel like it's definitely not looking good uh for the this harry potter game especially in a world of warner bros going like full dc on us which is fine i love that and i love the possibilities of that i really don't think 2020 right now is the time maybe not even 2021 although it is definitely Definitely possible. However, here's where I stand with this. PS5's reveal event off offers something very, very different that really not a lot of other things can. Now, we know, uh, I actually made a video last Friday, Warner Bros. is going to E3. Now, I specifically talked about Arkham in that regard, right? That, that I think that'll be the time we see this new Arkham game, that we see Rocksteady's game. It's very possible that Harry Potter could make an appearance that they could say, hey, here's some longer term projects uh, that we're working on. And I will make that video. I mean, I was originally going to make this video talking about E3 uh, with Harry Potter, but it's just too far away. I think the video itself would probably do better uh, for myself as well uh, if I waited a little bit closer to E3 to talk about it. Plus, you know, you could, you never know what other things could come out on it. So we will be talking about its E3 possibility uh, probably a few months from now, probably late April, early May. But the PS5 reveal event is something that you should look at. It really is, because what I see it as, and we've talked about this in a few videos, is I think a possibility for obviously games that are coming out in the very, very short term, and mainly Sony exclusives, which obviously is not Harry Potter. I don't want to get anybody confused, right? Uh, that is going to be its primary thing. We're going to see the console. We'll see the controller. We'll maybe see the price, maybe see the release date, uh, see the Sony exclusives. But they do need to show us or at least tell us that there's other studios, other developers out there that are making games for it. And I see a couple ways of doing this, one of which is to have maybe like a montage trailer of all of these different games. Some of these games may get shown off like entirely, right, like may get their own, uh, you know, actual like slot where we get to see something of them for next gen. I don't, I think that's probably the least likely of where we would see Harry Potter. Same thing with like a montage video if you show all these different games that are being worked on for, uh, from it, from all these different developers. I don't think it would be there, but... One thing I do think is, you know how when these, when any of these conferences or any of these uh, systems, and they talk about like all of the partnerships or all of the different studios that are working on games, and they have on the screen like all of the logos of the development teams. That's what I honestly feel like would be our first hint. Now, Avalanche Software, or Avalanche Studios, is the studio rumored to be working on this Harry Potter game. So, two things: one, we could just see a Warner Bros. Uh, sign, like a Warner Bros. logo, indicating that yeah, Warner Bros. has studios that are making. Making you know a game for the PS5, we could I guess track. Now that, that would not be confirmation that Harry Potter exists, but it would be something. The, the better option would be Avalanche or whatever the mystery studio is that's making this game. If they had that studio's logo on there, that would be a whole lot better. Because ultimately, again, the thing that is good with this game that has a leg up on over the Arkham game, not in terms of quality or anything, but I mean it definitely could, but. For Arkham, we're still very unsure if it's a current or cross-generation game, right? And that really will stop it or maybe actually help it out with the re reveal event. I think we've talked about, or definitely I will talk about it as we get closer for the Arkham, but it's like if the game is current generation, if it's for PS4, Xbox One, there is no way it's at the PS5 reveal event, right? It just takes itself basically out of the running. But if it is only for next gen, I don't even know if cross-generation games would make it, but it's very, like if it's the Assassin's Creed game, it's cross-gen, maybe that makes it to Sony's, uh, you know, little presentation, whatever. But 
for Harry Potter, the thing that it has going for it is it's solely next generation. All right? There's no way this game comes out on current gen. I, I really just don't think that that would ever happen. So that it does have a leg up in that regard in where if E3 is like a primary, like, hey, let's just talk about what's coming for the next generation. And like I've also pointed out that I, that has changed in my like mental status since I made the video saying that things aren't looking good for it is while I... I have always said, and I do think they, uh, for the most part, will stick to it. Warner Bros. announces their games. They come out very, very soon, which would stop a Harry Potter announcement, say, this first half of the year because it's not coming out the second half of the year. But when it comes to next gen, companies could be forced to shuffle their strategies a little bit, specifically companies that do this. Now, again, there are pros and cons, by the way, to both of these things. There's pros and cons to announcing your game and having it come out two, three years later, which is what first-party studios do, like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo. And there's pros and cons. And there's also pros and cons to doing what sometimes Ubisoft does, what uh, you know Warner Bros. does, and what countless others does. They announce their game. It comes out very, you know, four, five, six months later. Okay? There's pros and cons to each of them. But when it comes to next gen, I feel like at least for the first year or so, it's, it's probably a game of you announce your game and you say that, or you don't even, maybe, not necessarily announce it, because an announcement may be taken as like you show a full trailer. Maybe you say you're making it, or you have a little tease, or you have one of those like development diaries where you show the studio that they're making a game and you say, hey, they're making this game. Remember, EA did that with a lot of their Star Wars studios. Maybe you do something like that and you say, hey, here's some of the games we have being worked on for next gen that are still a while out. Again, I always go back to Take Two. Take Two is the owner of Rockstar, all you know, so all the GTA, Red Dead, all that kind of stuff. Bioshock games, right? And they had said uh, this past December, and they also reconfirmed in February that hey, they're making a bio, like we have a Bioshock game being made by our studio, but it's years away. Do not expect it for a very, very long time. Uh, and I don't know. And again, like you could look at that and say, is that really characteristic of Take Two? Well, not necessarily. I mean, they they have for Red Dead's, for uh, GTA's, for all these kind of games. They do kind of announce them and they release them very soon after. They don't have a lot of uh, build up to it until like right before, like the last like two, three months before it. They really build stuff up on it. I mean, that's their strategy. So to say about this Bioshock could be to come out ahead of all these rumors that were speculating that there was a Bioshock game and they felt like, hey, we just want to kind of come out there and, and, and you know, they, they didn't say this, but I wonder what it was. Was it that, that they wanted to get ahead of the rumors or was it that it's a next generation game and they just want people to know that like, hey, this is something we're working on. It's going to be next gen so you can get excited about a next generation Bioshock game, which is a huge thing I'm sure is helping them, right? Uh, but also, it's going to take a while. Uh, so I think that's a really good strategy. And honestly, it's a strategy we could see a lot of companies go on uh, this year. Really, 2020 is that year because it's the year right before and into uh, next generation. So it's a time for companies to say, hey, you know, not necessarily say this, but like, hey, we normally don't do this, right? Warner Bros. doesn't normally announce their game and say, well, it's going to take like two years, though. They normally don't do that. But because of the circumstances, maybe it is. Maybe they say, hey. We're working on a... Remember that Harry Potter leak? Well, it is real. We are working on a... Like, we're, we have this whole faction of studios making, like, a DC universe. We really want to kick that off with Next Gen. But we're also working on a Harry Potter game. And it's in... You know, it, it's being... It's doing good. It's been worked on for a couple years. But it's still got a lot of years left. So, like, don't expect it for a while. That would be totally sufficient. And could that be something we get in a PS5 reveal event? Could we get that at a E3? Anything like that? Yeah, it really is. Uh, it, it's it, it's a little bit of a stretch for uh, the PS5 reveal event. Again, I think the biggest info we would get from the reveal event is the logo of the studio that's making it, and we would have to do some investigation uh, into it, right, to see, like, okay, well, has there been any talks about the studio, maybe any job listings? Like, what are they working on? Can we look into them a little bit more? I think that is something we could realize. I mean, I I kind of expect, I don't know about you guys, I kind of expect that from the PS5 reveal event. Like, I want to see first-party games. I expect to visually see some of them, like Horizon, Spider-Man, some of those games I want to uh, see. I also want to see some third-party games. But also, I do kind of expect to see, like, here's a bulletin of just all of these development studios making games for the PS5. I want to see that. And that's just a thing that we've seen many, many years, many, many times for different systems. We've seen that. Uh, and I, again, that really, and this would be the first time that I really like look at it for more than, oh, there's just like 
50. You know what I mean? Because normally, like when I'm not talking about this kind of stuff, I look at that list or I look at those development studios and I just like I turn my brain off and I'm like, oh, look. There's that many of them making games. Like, look at all those exciting games. I'm not going to think about what they could be, but they're just games that are coming. Now, specifically because I like doing this, and I think this is really interesting, now we can look at it and say, hey, we don't know what... No, like, nobody's talked about what that studio is making, so let's maybe look them up. Let's see what... Ex like, can we find out uh, what they're making? And so something like that is what I think could very well happen at PS5's reveal event. You know, will we see Harry Potter, you know, whatever it's called now, RPG? No, I really don't think, I, I you know, like it's, it was a question. The video is a question. I really don't think we'd visually see it, but I think we could start to see some hints. And hey, you know, again, I, I wasn't very sure of it. In fact, I said, I don't think this is a year we get anything from it. But you know what? Thinking about it now, maybe Warner Bros. changes up their strategy. And, and honestly, what brought that on is the fact that I don't think they could go past E3 without announcing both Batman and uh, Rocksteady's game. So Warner Bros. Montreal and Rocksteady. And one of the biggest things I had told you guys is I really don't think they can announce all these games at the same time. And I think it will hurt. But I feel like that's just the strategy they've decided to go on now. So, with that being uh, said, why can't you throw... I mean, if you're going to announce an Arkham 2020 and a Justice League game, say, from Rocksteady, why can't you also throw in a third DC studio that's making Superman? Why can't you also throw in Harry Potter? Because some of these games are further out, out, out than others, and so it doesn't, I guess, really hurt, right? Because you could just say, we're making Harry Potter. You don't have to show it. And then, all of a sudden, well, now us, like this fan them we know we can start getting excited and then also we have visual stuff for all these other games that we can get in the meantime right so i, I think it's uh 22 i i kind of take it back 180 2020 is looking good i'm not actually sure i mean this this year could definitely come and go without any harry potter whatsoever and i wouldn't honestly be shocked whatsoever i've kind of braced myself from that or for that at this point now it would kind of just be like oh this is a a really nice surprise that we would get that so we'll have to see but let me know in the comments below guys what do you think do you think harry potter do you think we get some sort of clue from the ps5 reveal event maybe e3 let me know your thoughts in the comments below make sure you guys subscribe to this youtube channel podcast now hit the bell icon so you guys know when these videos go up and i'll continue making these harry potter videos you guys have been always very supportive uh, of these videos let me know if there's any kind of videos you want me to talk about harry potter related and we'll be covering anything that happens about this game all the way through it releasing okay so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you on the next video